to the podcast episode 30 fucking 8. We in the building. 38. What's up, people? 38. Um, it's your boy, International Walk. And it's your girl, Taj, the co-hostess with the mostest. She is the co-hostess with the mostest. Um, we back, episode 38. How y'all doing? Um, just want to say what's up. Hope y'all doing all right out there. You all good? I'm giving a little shimmy. She's shaking a little shimmy. Giving a little shimmy in honor of Nanaretta. Shaking a little shimmy in honor of Nanaretta. Let's get to it. How are you? I am well. Go. <laughs> my mental... Don't stop there. Go. You know the deal. You know, my mental is an eight. I feel good. Mental's and an eight. Mental's an eight. I, um, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. You calculating me? Go ahead. My mental's an eight. I feel good. Um... Mentals I eight. feel positive. Feel good, positive. We're, you know, on the upside of life, um, climbing up the mountain. We're climbing up. Ain't that a song? No, it's not. Okay. Don't All right. Do that here. <laughs> so, um, I always sing songs wrong. I mean, knowing them, but not really. Okay. My mental say work. I don't want to speak on some things, but I'm going to just put it in the atmosphere. I'm going to say work is an eight, too. Work is an eight. Yeah. Work is an eight. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Finance. Finances. Finances is a 10 because God is about to bless our socks off so that we can be a blessing to others. So I'm claiming that, too. Finances is a 10. Mm-hmm. 10. How about you? Um, Run me some numbers. I'm good. My mental is an eight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put myself down for eight. Eight is good. Eight. I like an eight. Eight is better than seven. Yeah. Work a nine. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to put myself down for a nine for work. What that change? What that chicken looking like? Chicken is chicken. That's I'm going to go with you. I'm going to manifest a ten. No, that's right. Because we got to be on the same page. That. That's, oh, that's right. So if we're on the same page, then it'll come to fruition. Mix, yeah, that's mix how that all do. up. I like um, that. I like that. What's your wows and woes for this week? Wows and woes for this week. My wow is my website almost done. Ow. So y'all about to jump on that Act to the Podcast website. Merch line going to be up. Get your shirts, get your hoodies, and get your hats, and get your shit for the winter. It ain't it ain't short sleeve stuff. This is all long sleeve stuff. Sh sh don't give them too much. Don't give them too much. Quality, Keep some suspense dope, in there. But be able to go to the pa the podcast. You can check out some audio podcasts. You ain't gotta watch the video if you're driving. You can check it out that way. Or if you want to sit, you can watch it on YouTube or you can watch it off the website. So I think when all you go to the coming. gym, you know, sometimes music don't really do it for you. Need some invigorating conversation. So the audio files will be perfect for that. Like he said, if you're driving, you got a long drive. Some people are having to transition back to working in the office. Some people have long commutes, you know, um, if you're taking road trips, you know, whatever it is. You might be going to the supermarket. Sometimes what I like to do, I put my headphones into the supermarket and I walk around and I might listen to my gospel music or whatever I listen to. Listen to the podcast, that's the perfect time. You get some time to yourself. Me, as a married woman, I don't always have me time. Which is okay, because I enjoy our time, but my me time, sometimes it's the supermarket. You know, it's it's just me. I'm by myself. I'm in my own thoughts. I browse a little bit. So, yeah. Perfect example. So, get up on that audio. Get up on Act 2, the podcast. Um, it's like, going to be like a... Subscribe. Do all that good stuff. You know, fuck with us. Um, like I said, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, stuff coming for the winter. That's exactly right on time while this chill is in the air. So, I think y'all going to like it. Um, if y'all fuck with us, y'all fuck with us, like we always say. So, the opportunity is there. Um, and we got a lot of activities that. coming around <coughs> drop of the website. I have to tell y'all, I'm so, so, so proud of y'all host, my husband, my best friend. That's my best friend. That's my best friend. Okay. <laughs> because he has been working hard. Like, he really has. And I'm so proud of him. Um, and I, and I, it's, it's awesome. We, we've been saying for a long time, big things coming, big things coming. Cause we didn't really want to do anything that we didn't want to do anything half-assed. Wanted to look professional. We wanted to do it how it's supposed to be done. So 
your boy he's been doing his thing i'm super super proud i feel like i need like a like a big drum a big uh bomb dropping yeah so that's gonna be dope um you think maybe we could do some giveaways when we like have the release i don't know maybe we will we'll think we'll about that but once it drops and we you know everything checks out every all happy i'll shout out the media company that produced it for me so um it's gonna be dope just keep uh uh keep an eye out for that super dope what's your woe my woe is that um you know my my nana she um you know my nana is is old and you know what happens with old age and not that uh she just on my mind that's all and you know having a person in your life that's 98 years old is um you know it's a good thing but you know you think about them if they're you know sick or not able to walk around and shit like that so just nana's on my mind that's a woe um having a good week but when i think about her it bums me out um because you know she just in the situation that she in yeah. shout out to nana so yeah shout, mm, sorry not to cut you off mm -hmm. but shout out to margaretta d's margaretta lillian d's my grandmother my nana um best lady i ever knew so pray for throw, throw some throw some prayers up to the big guy upstairs. Best lady for that Nana. I know. All right. Yeah, yeah. Throw, throw some prayers up for Nana. Again, she's still with us and she's still kicking. She is feisty, and that's that was the shimmy in honor mm -hmm. of Nana because she always be like, "Ooh, girl, shaking her shoulders." I she love dope. me some Nana. And, and Nana even now that she's one. that she ninety eight, um, you know, see her in the condition she in, she's still witty. Mm -hmm. She's still witty. I mean, she there and she not there but she when she there she there like she still got the wit about her she still want to throw snaps at you and jabs and you know she she's still there so that's that's good to see yeah. um but you know yet yeah, being so old and you know yeah. um we we'll to talk about the evolution well, my wilds and wolves. Oh, I'm really sorry. Weird. I'm so sorry. Your host yeah. is fucked it all up. Um, <laughs> you know, I wanted to up. throw it to you first. Yeah, you, you right. know, just I'm to sorry. switch up, give you a chance. That's Again, okay. I'm talking about my grandmother, That's my nana. Right. That was on my mind. But baby, what's your wilds and wolves? So my wow, I want to say shout out to my little cousin and his beautiful, the beautiful lady in his life. They just had their second son. And I was given the honor of being asked to be the godmother. That's where I smoke. And, um, you know, it, it just, it made me feel good. It made me think about my grandma. You know, a lot of people always say, yeah, you see a lot of memes out there that says, um, like, how close you were with your cousins back in the day. But as the generations come down, you know, families kind of go their own separate way. You don't really know each other, the next generation, the way the previous generation did. And... You know, I know if my grandma was here, things would probably be much different than they are with our family dynamics. Nevertheless, I'm happy that he still loves and respects me and, you know, wanted me to be a part of his son's life. I'm excited about it. Um, I love the kids. I love the opportunity to just be a good influence in, in any child's life. So that was my mom of the week. It really made me feel good and I'm excited. She is. Yeah. What's your world? You know, my world was Nana, but you, you know, you seeing you sad and scared you know i'm happy that i'm happy nana's still with us you know she's 98 and life is fragile but she's she is a strong lady and she's kicking but seeing you upset you know i just want to be there to support you you know we've been together for 20 years and i know that so many families have been devastated by um death and you know, not for nothing. It ain't luck at all, but that just hasn't been our story. Um, so, you know, I, it's just something. And again, Nana's still here. She won't be here. You ask me. I think Nana got like 20 more years. In her. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but, you know, just that, you know, that fear of not, the not the unknowing and seeing my baby upset. That was my woe. And um, I was happy that things were different where I was able to be there with you because I didn't know if I was going to have to wait in the car or something. It don't matter if I had to send the car for 17 hours while you saw her. We won. We we going we gone together. So, yeah. hey. But, I, but, you know, I'm just happy that things worked out the way that they did. And, um, you know, but that was my well. Yeah. Yep, but I love you and I always got your back. Appreciate it. Um, what we getting into this week? 
I watch something and I learn some stuff and I just want to talk about some stuff and I get deep into it, elaborate a little bit on some stuff that I throw out there. Mm. And um, it pertains to the evolution of relationship and marriage. Oh, wow. Okay. You said get deep. You, that's what you said. He said, I want to get deep into it. I just said, you know, elaborate on your answers. Like, don't, you know. This but is you said, of... I want to get deep into it. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, you know, I like a deep conversation. Okay. All right. All right. I, like <laughs> it, I like it deep. You were supposed to say, I like it deep, too. I don't like it deep. You know. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it deep. That went to the left. I like it just as right depth. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it deep. <laughs> I like the, the depth of me. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I hope this isn't anything like biblical because we went all the way left with that. Oh, no, I was just watching something and learning some stuff about you know um, the evolution of marriage and the relationship, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to get your take on what you thought about it and where you think our marriage and relationship has evolved to. Oh, wow. Or where it has it. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, um, one of the things I learned, and, you know, people out there, y'all might have heard this before, but men set the tone for the relationship. Would you agree? Um, I feel like that's a very broad statement. Men set the tone for the relationship. Uh, I, I think I can agree with that. Okay. Because... You're a smart person. Oh, okay. Because okay. I thought you was about to go on to one of your things like, well, no, your because, feminist things like, is what I was about to say. No, because I thought it was a very general statement. But when you think about it, women are very emotional. and they, But they feed off of men's emotions. So a woman could really, really, really be feeling a man or feeling a situation. But if it's not reciprocated or the man is not giving back that same energy, then things men set the tone so that's so, why i had to think about it but i agree so the, the, i'm gonna say the whole the whole piece is men set the tone for the relationship and establish a safe environment for you to love us in. Mm. And say that one more time for me men set the tone for a relationship to establish a safe environment for you to love us in okay the woman okay and women create an atmosphere once they feel safe to love then she makes it peaceful for me. Mm, okay. Okay. I, well, and you know what? So first, let me just say this because I, you know, you'll have people say, "Well, not my relationship, but not." So we're speaking from our own opinion, our own right. experience. And this, we're not and every telling situation, nobody what to do. Yeah, and every situation doesn't apply to every relationship. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, so that you know, so. It's kind of like, to me, I, I think of, um, y'all, you know, I like to think of metaphors and stuff. It's like men build a house and they set the foundation. And once it's built and it's stable and it's sturdy, then the woman, she creates the atmosphere inside the house to, you know, make it comfortable. So that's the mindset that that puts me into where a man sets that foundation. Because if a woman feels like these walls are wobbly or this foundation is weak or I ain't too sure about you or you won't make me feel too sure about us mm -hmm. then her mindset and the atmosphere that she is going to set in that house is going to reflect that right but if she feels that you know this is a secure situation this is stable I'm protected I'm safe I'm, safe, I'm loved I'm then valued, can, I'm provided for, then... Now I can be vulnerable. Exactly, exactly. <coughs> and she can blossom in in that environment. So I, I that that's the image that it gives me. The man, the man builds the house. Now I know we're going to have these feminist women that say, well, I build the house. Okay, you may and help, the, the but... The man is the foundation and also in, in learning and um, that that's the only part of the house that's not transferable. The foundation. Yeah, you can move everything else, but you got to tear the foundation down to move that. You can't mm. just transfer that. Like, you can build a new wall, can knock this down and build something else. You can finish a basement. You can do shit to the house. Oh, wait. So, the house analogy was used in whatever you watched? I'm going with what you said. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm about to say, wow. That was pretty um, perceptive of me, but okay. Um, Okay, so we're on the same page with that. Definitely. Um, how do you think that pertains to our situation, to our marriage, to our relationship? 
have I um, set the foundation for our relationship in the beginning, anywhere in a relationship? Like, is that applicable to um, our situation? It ha it has um yes I'll say that yes and and you know what I feel like you know when you were going through your situation that you were going through yes I knew you loved me and yes I knew that you know our relationship was solid um I didn't know I I don't know it was almost like I didn't know. I never knew what the next moment could hold. Whether you was leaving out for work and you getting pulled over and our life just crumbling from then, from that moment. Um, you just running a wild water grab something and something happening. Like anything could have happened that could, that, you know, our... Could have changed our dynamic. Like that. And it wasn't even so much <laughs> like you could have showed our relationship, you know, I felt was stable. But just the, the foundation of it that was created was had some cracks in the foundation because of your situation mm -hmm. so for me it wasn't and, and it's weird because it's one of those things that you don't realize until it's in hindsight like the sense of peace that i have now when i think back on it like I, again i've always had the peace in us the peace in your um and your uh Oh my goodness, what is the word? And your faithfulness and your fi fidelity, is that the fidelity. word? Fidelity. Yeah, the, the, your, your loyalty to me. I, I've always had like the faith and trust in that, but in, in peace and like not worrying about you out here in the streets, but the that feeling of even more peace in just our life and not having to worry about the door being kicked in you know, by the U.S. Marshals at any moment or you calling me, you know, you leaving for work one morning and you getting pulled over by the cops and I never, well, not never see you again. The next time I see you, you're behind bars. Like that, those worries are gone now. So it's like in hindsight, I realized how unstable our foundation was, our house was. So even in trying to make it a good environment because that also impacted your mental space. Right, because so, like, I understand what you're saying because I feel like then, as much as you say, like, you felt me the way that I loved you and the way that I care about you, like, I felt that I was giving you everything that I had, but I always had, I always felt like a, a, there was a distraction there. Right. Like, that was was keeping me from not, like, putting my, putting both feet in or or, or focusing, but just there's this black cloud hanging over my head that, like you said, can change the dynamic of this thing that I'm feeding and putting into can change like that. So, yeah, I understand what you were saying. And um, I always felt like that was a distraction. Like, I couldn't zero in. So, like, when that was over and we got married, it was like, now I can lock in. Now I can really, really, really pay attention where before I felt like we was living in a, in sort of like an erratic state. But like you said, calm, we know we were solid. We knew mm -hmm. what we had to do from day to day. You went to work, I went to work. We we um, did stuff around my situation, but still there was always an underlying, uh, underlying erraticness about it. Yeah, and, like, and, and so many plans and goals that we had, while they sound good in, in theory, there was always that parenthesis around you, mm -hmm. you know, for a lack of better words, because, you know, we could want to do a whole lot, but without you being able to show ID, it, 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 the limitations that we had, and we made the best of it, but it's like making the best of um, a patch, uh, a, a, a leaky roof. It's really making lemonade out of lemons it's really making a shit sandwich like if that's really what it is when you think back i mean it tastes it. better than shit but you know, you know i'm just saying maybe a bad metaphor yeah. but i'm just it's saying it's like making and, the best out of a leaky roof yeah. that's why i'm like it's leaking and you gonna patch it up and we still gonna live here and we're not gonna let it stop us from doing anything you know you might have to spackle over there a couple of times cut that piece out and fix it back <laughs> but we're gonna make it do what it do and we're gonna make it pretty around it but at the same time, the roof is still leaking underneath that piece of sheetrock. So, yeah. Um. And then one of the other things, too, 
you know, again, in hindsight, this is one of those things where you realize, like you said, your mental space where you couldn't always be there. Like, I remember, like, it wasn't like coming, it, it was almost like seasonally, where, where, like, for your seasons. Like, I would come home for a couple weeks and you would... Well, especially when it started to be winter time because it got dark early. So if I'm getting home at six o'clock, you would be sitting in the living room, all the lights out in the house, watching TV. And I knew that meant you were in a bad mental space, you know, because of your situation. Because we could be in a good place, but I knew like during those moments of time, I just had to, you know, wait and keep encouraging you, but wait until you were out of that space. But again, all of those things impacted us. And and obviously we see an evolution in that. Absolutely. Obviously we see an evolution in that. Um, a man can't ask for submission unless the woman is the mission. Unless the woman is the mission. Absolutely, you can't expect me to submit if this if you ain't one hundred percent sure this is what you want, because I have to feel. I have to feel so all those things we talked about yeah. safe, secure, provided for, loved, attend to. And I well not only that, I have to I have to allow myself to be vulnerable enough to know that me sub being submissive is not going to be abused. Taking advantage of Yeah. That. I don't want to be submissive to you and be vulnerable to you for then you to misuse my trust in you. So I one hundred percent have to feel assured that this is what you want. It I'm the bag. I'm the prize. And you're coming for it. So a man can't ask for submission unless the woman is the mission. A woman can't ask for affection unless the man is her attention. Well, yeah, because it... Uh, and you know what? It's, it's one of those things that it's a two-way street because <coughs> affection is not always... And I, this is my belief it's not always the touchy feely you know it's you know no it's we, everything that's under the definition of affection right but but so, so often i think people they don't people, people aren't reading the definition of affection people are assuming affection means you're holding my hand you're rubbing me you're hugging me you're touching me but they don't realize the affection can just mean like you know you asking me how was my day and intensively listening mm -hmm. you know you asking me you know would you like a cup of coffee while you know just after work just so that you can chill um you know j j it can be those non-physical things but still you're showing me care that you know you care about me and you and so you you can't show affection if you said the the a man can't show all together a man can't ask for submission unless the woman right. is the mission a woman can't ask for affection unless the man is her attention. Right. So you have. So a man is going to a man who's paying attention because I think that should go both ways is going to reciprocate that woman paying attention to him is going to make him want to reciprocate by showing her affection. Right. So yeah, I I agree. All right. How does that pertain to our relationship? We've struggled with the. Um, I, see the the first part the be, submission uh the submission Calm and down, being the mission. <laughs> I don't think we've ever struggled there because you've always let me know. Like this was what you wanted, me us, like that. So that I'm a traditional man. Yeah. So that in of itself, I I don't think that has ever been an issue for us. Um, I think the submission part for me probably was more difficult because not that I didn't know that your mission was me. I didn't know that because of your situation that your mission could be fulfilled. Wow. You know, so, so wow. that. Wow. And so that that's the first time I heard you say that. Well, because you you never asked these questions, so well, I never had to think about it. Time, but we've had conversations about yeah. our situation and cried and laughed. Like I've never heard you say that, but yeah, but it that's was... why that's eye opening because I always felt like that. Like when I say it's a, it was a distraction, and I'm putting all this stuff into it, and from year one to year fifteen, we accumulate all this love and trust and and physical things and you know house and cars and it's like that shit can just go away 
at any moment. Right. So and so in that it you know yeah I want I want to fully allow myself to trust and you know allow you to have the headship that you should have in our relationship. But then it was kind of I think subconsciously I felt like I, I might always be, have to be on my own one day. Exactly, and I always had to. Um, and, and, and part of it too was in protection of you as well because I knew in certain places, you know, I I had to be the one to kind of be more f in the forefront because I got to show my ID. Mm -hmm. You know, when they start asking questions, you know, me having conversations just to try to deflect from the fact that you don't have ID. So, you know, here's my ID, here's our paperwork, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Oh, him, okay, you know, not flagging him, but don't focus on you so much because I don't want, I never wanted, we never wanted to be a situation. And I know how that made you feel as a man, as a person, to not be able to have our Having day. to fall back in those moments or yeah. the simple things, not being able to plan a trip for us or marry you or... Or surprise you <coughs> with stuff because you didn't have, you know, bank accounts in your name, you didn't have credit cards in your name, so you couldn't do anything without me per se. Right. So in those, in those instances, it was almost like, not like I felt like I had to be the head because you were, but I you you are and you were at that time. But I did have to sort of put a, a some protection around us because I knew we was here. They the people whoever we're talking to may not know. So and again with that um, hanging over our head, never knowing when the house is gonna crumble, and I really gotta step up and be like. Whatever about to happen, I'm gonna hold us down. Mm -hmm. So that's that that the submission part. That's um, where that kind of where those struggles were. It's now, funny how that was in the beginning, where <coughs> like you said <coughs> you knew my situation, I knew it, but in the beginning it didn't feel. Um, and I don't, I'm speaking for me, mm -hmm. not you, because I know you had your own feelings about it. Um, but it didn't feel as stringent as it did in the latter years. And that's weird because you would think it would be hard in the beginning and it would get easier, but at least I thought so. But it got harder as time went on. It got more suffocating, it got more. And I guess that's through the growth of us as individuals and through the growth of our relationship. But it was like at every day, like I could feel this, like from Monday to Tuesday, like this shit is harder. Well, for me anyway well and the thing is too as we grew up we wanted more like okay exactly. when we got together i was 20 you were 24 so well i was like 19 and then 20, but whatever so at that time we just want we you know you had your apartment we was going to the mall we was you know take Buying you know having packages. dates and stuff <laughs> yeah so the things that we wanted in life were simpler and then as we got older we were exposed to more we had more experiences so we drove up and down the east coast really for vacations 16 driving vacations yeah up and down the east coast 16 16 we had well because we didn't go last year because of covid and i think the been. first couple years we didn't go like the first two years then we started going on vacation like, like every year. year yeah but so, so you we figure we like drove 16. up and down the east coast and then as we got older you know we started getting burnt out and it was like ugh, we so again as we grew individually together we were exposed to more we experienced more we wanted more and that's when we realized it was getting tighter because this was like how was big our book. bubble was and then we grew and grew and grew and grew into that bubble then it was like you can't go no further than this yeah i felt like it was a book and we was just stuck on this page like this is the page we on 38 because the rest of it was glued together and it's like we can't turn well i felt like that about me like i can't turn to page 39 for shit mm -hmm. like i'm just constantly reading page 38 and i'm burnt out <laughs> yeah so i think i i would agree with that again i wanted you know the the desire to travel the desire you know even when we went when we would go places and even still and being together for 19 years up until that point it was things that i never thought about just to tell y'all a quick story like one time um 
my niece needed to be our niece needed to be picked up from school like whatever was going on we just needed somebody to pick her up from school and he literally worked five ten not it was probably seven minutes from her school the most convenient person like he can go and get her but he never wanted the kids to ride in a car with him because he didn't have a license he knew his situation and god forbid the cops stopped him then you know now they in a car and they like you know what's going on um the name he was using was one thing they know his real name like it so i never realized you so he said like you know and we kind of knew like eh, he don't really want to but i didn't realize how deeply he felt how strongly he felt about that so it was still like hey i know you don't really want to do this but can you just make an exception and he was like no but it made him so upset not that i asked but because again here's something else that he can't do because he didn't want to put within my family yeah not like a friend asking me but i can't even participate in something within my family and my family not that it was on purpose but can it, because I wasn't as transparent with my feelings as mm -hmm. I was, can 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 give back the feeling of oh he's mean he just don't want to do do nothing for us or you know well, why he got to be like that at least that's how I felt and it's like damn like I can't really explain this I really? can't yeah I can't really articulate this but you know I love y'all and I just can't participate in this for the sake of all of this and then it's like oh oh okay I get it like. That's that's honorable. That's worthy. That does make sense. But I never, on my own, would have thought of that. Yeah, and that was the thing. Like, and, and not only like, but see, for me, that's what I mean. Where it was deeper. Like, it really made you upset that mm -hmm. you couldn't. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but ethically, you felt like I cannot put our kids in th in that potential danger. And I that's so respectable. For you to feel that way but again that was just an example of of those things that just started to crumble one last example when we went to um new york for a weekend you know our um our favorite couple um his brother and his wife um my sister-in-law and brother-in-law we you know we'll go out a lot together go you know hang out whatever we went to new york for the weekend and it was something first of all we were going to drive there together and he's like, no, they can drive their own car. And it was just weird. Like, we all go in the same place. Like, why not? But whatever. And then when we get there, they parked. And then we had to find parking. So they, like, hopped in our car. We just, you know, was driving around the blocks. Like, literally around the corner from the hotel. How quiet I got. And he was, like, weird. Like, the dynamic was just so weird. Like, we here to have fun for the weekend. Like, what's up? And then the plan was, once we park these cars, we're not moving them anyway, but let's just find parking. And it wasn't until after that. And I and then I asked you, because I it, it hit me like, this is why he didn't want them riding in the car with us to New York. And then even in New York, he never wanted... And, and not to say he didn't care about me, but I knew his situation. I knew what to say if the cops asked us anything. Well, you know me, I ain't talking to the cops anyway. Mm -hmm. But we were on the same page, but just having other people being potentially put in harm's way or and being put in lie. danger, it was like he never wanted to do it. So it was just those kind of situations <laughs> that always presented themselves where it was like a reminder of we reached the capacity of that bubble. Mm -hmm. And this bubble is going to pop one or two ways, so. The bubble in the book. Can't write on that page no more. Right, <laughs> right. Okay, now the other part about the attention, we struggle with that too, but I think it, that that was because, again, of us both having to grow and being able to communicate, share our needs. I think when we learned each other's love Lo language. Oh my goodness, was I was about to say that. That changed, yep. that dynamic changed. Because for me, it really made me understand like it, um, <clears throat> uh, like the feelings of a different person, mm -hmm. and like everybody, the way I love isn't the way you love, and the right. way that I like to be loved isn't the way you like to be loved. No, you know, there's some parts that right. cross over, but not necessarily. You have your specific things that you like. I have my specific things that I like, and that wasn't something that I knew from day one. Right at all. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't something that I knew from day one. So when we, I don't know how that came about. 
would we get something like that for Christmas or something? I think I remember. I don't know, but smoked I smoked mean... a lot, but it was like something we had learned, and it was like, okay, let's go through these love languages, and it was like, wow, this is mm -hmm. like true. When you're reading them in silence in your head, you're like, man, that's her. Yeah. Like that's that's him. Like th this shit is real. Like whoever created mm -hmm. these was really in love. And you know what I think is the biggest misconception about love languages when people say. I want all of them. It's like, of course you want all of them, but everybody has a primary and secondary love language, and then the others fall after that. Everybody wants to spend quality time with people they love. Everybody wants to be touched. Everybody wants to hear words of affirmation. Everybody wants to do buy gifts, and everybody wants to give service. But it's just which of those speak the loudest to volume you, yeah. to you. So I hate when people be like, why do I got to just pick one? I want all of them. Of course. That's because who does it. Because, again, this leads me to my second statement that we're coming up on. That's a great, a great segue. How some people feel entitled about what they want. Like somebody saying, okay, I, why can't I have all of them? So... The way we know our relationship, just tell me if, how you feel about this statement. The way we know our relationship is good at, is if there's work to do. The assignment is transition and growth. There is no perfect marriage. There is no perfect spouse. Um. So the way we know that our relationship is good is if there is work to do. And don't take that in a negative connotation right. because you, you want to be... Um, healing and transparent and, and growing even in great times so I'm right. not talking about work where a sense of oh shit there's something wrong we got work to do yeah. so take that out of it I'm just saying like there's always growth and challenge and transition to, to happen otherwise we're stagnant not because we're never going to feel like I'm never going to feel like oh she's perfect like you're perfect for me but not a perfect right, individual right i'm perfect for you but i'm not a perfect individual so the the it's always transition and growth to go to the next chapter or the next dimension but you know there's nobody perfect but you know why i think that's even what's even what stands out about that to me which makes that even more of a true statement when you say the way we know our relationship is good because if you recognize that there's transition and growth that means you're paying attention to the other person right because if you're not then you won't you you're not that's recognizing not your anything right so i think that's even more indicative of it being a good relationship the fact that you are in tune with your partner people evolve I, what did you say this is the evolution of relationships marriage marriage people evolve People slash marriage. Yeah. No, no, but what I'm saying is individually mm -hmm. people evolve. Right. So I can't love you, treat you, talk to you, you know, handle you um the way I did um I won't say a month, but a year ago, six months ago, the way I do today, because you're steadily evolving. Now that don't mean you're different today than you were yesterday, mm -hmm. but as you're steadily evolving, I have to be in tune with you. Like, oh, this is what he likes. Oh, okay, now he likes this. Now he don't eat beef right now. You know, I mean, that's something very shallow and superficial. But just the things that I see, I've noticed that he's becoming a little more of a serious person. He's still fun and playful and we still, you know, have our times, but you have to be in tune with your partner. So I, I think that's 100% true because if you are just, if you're not growing and you're not transitioning, then that means you're stuck. And if I was treating you like the person you were Three a year ago, ago, like it wouldn't <laughs> be comfortable to you because, the, and the same with me, I'm not that person anymore. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think and that's, that's another, I didn't, that's a, something else I learned while while watching this is that it can be extremely difficult to keep up with your partner's growth if you're not paying attention and in tune right because which it, that's just what you said like yeah because you can I'm look up and be like, like who the hell is this yeah, person because you ain't been you, paying attention if i'm treating you like i was three years ago then for three years i ain't been paying attention to your growth or your your transition at all 
and the people be like, you change, you different, mm-hmm. you don't act the way you used to act, or you know, you you brand, you acting brand new. And it's like, uh, yeah, I'm supposed to change. Like, you can't treat me at 40 the way I was at 37. Like, mentally, I'm different. Physically, I'm different. Emotionally, spiritually, like, I'm not the same person. Yeah. I'm not the, I don't want to be the same person. I don't want to be the same Natasha. I don't want to be the same wife. I don't want to be the same Christian. I don't want to be the same sister, aunt, friend, daughter. Like, I, I am different. How does that statement pertain to our relationship? Well, all of all of the above, like our relationship, it, it I, our relationship. The way we is know like, our relationship is good is that there's work to do. Assignment is trans. The assignment is transition and growth. There is no perfect marriage. There is no perfect spouse. I think that word "perfect" has been dangerous for us throughout the years. Um, because not as of recent, but throughout the years, I would agree. Yeah, that's what I said throughout the years. Yeah, it has been dangerous for us because, you know, in in some ways or another, we have mistake mistaken, mistaken or mistaken, mistaken. Uh, yeah, mistaken. Um, you know, things that one or the other have said is, "Oh, you think you're perfect," when that's never. I I know that that's never the perception that either of us want have to of get. Each other. Yeah. Or, or want to give of mm-hmm. ourselves. Like, I know I'm I'm so flawed, and I know that you receive that, too. I'm definitely flawed. So I think that word perfect, you, you like, that should just be taken out of anybody's vocabulary. Like, there is no perfect relationship. Be- so, first of all, if there was a perfect relationship, we would be robots. Because every relationship is different. So your, this relationship can't be perfect if this relationship is perfect too and they're completely different well, but it doesn't mean then, that we're not perfect for each other then you're saying perfect is relative to each individual relationship so like you said we could be over here and we think we perfect and we can be over here and we think we perfect but that's the problem everybody should go into it knowing no matter how much work you do no matter how much therapy you go to no matter how many years y'all spend together you're never going to be perfect. But the thing is this, too. You, you just can work towards think. excellence. You can do that because practice makes makes excellence. You can get that close where you guys are in tune and you can pick up nuances and you, you know the codes of each other. You can finish each other's sentences. You can do that, but you can never be perfect. But what you just made me think, what if all of that you said is the mark of perfection in a relationship? Maybe just just hear me out. Maybe the perfect relationship is recognizing that the two individuals are imperfect, working towards constant growth and improvement, um, acknowledging each other's faults as well as helping each other to grow and improve through them, respecting each other, communicating with each other. So that's, Maybe the, bar, though, that's the perfect bar. Yeah, but th- knowing that you're not perfect and working I agree. through those. That's I- I'm my just point. saying, yeah, that's my like, point. So, so even though you say no relationship is perfect, I think no two people are perfect. Exactly, but yeah. if you're talking about a woman saying, oh, the love language is I want all of them. Like, that's what I mean. You're never going to get all of them because no, nobody is perfect. That emotion isn't perfect. There's going to be ups and downs, and you have to do what you said, compromise, talk, being able to recognize move past shit but it's it's always going to be there but no no so what i was saying about the love languages no i you do what i was saying is you do want all of them and you do get all of them but there's one that speaks louder for some people i don't think everybody gets all of them i think that's the, the difference in love that's just what i got out of it and even in our situation neither one of us get all of them and there's ones that speak louder to us but but what, what, which one? Okay, so spending quality time, mm-hmm. affe- um, uh, touch, uh, ser- gifts of service. I'm sorry, acts of service, mm-hmm. gifts, and words of affirmation. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying. People, when you love somebody, you're going to give everybody all those things. 
But guess what? Quality time, that's at the top of your list. So if I want to show him like how much I really love him, I know that he receives that through quality time. For me, you know, it's but but that doesn't mean that you don't want me to do nice things for you. It doesn't mean you don't really care about gifts, but uh, you like gifts. It doesn't mean that you don't I want get physical what you're saying. touch. It's not the hundred percent. This is sixty exactly. percent. This is forty percent. But eventually, if you care about that person, all those will that be makes a well-rounded love. That that's what that creates well-rounded love. But again, it's a pie. So one of those pieces of pie you want more of than the others gotcha. and it changes for everybody and you have to you got to split the pie you got to have some balance so yeah. you got to split the pie up in different now ways. i think when when, when uh, i don't just want to say women because i don't i never talked to a man about this but i think where you're being selfish to the other person is if you feel like that pie is evenly sliced like how can you expect the person to operate there you don't know what you really want that and and that's okay too because you might still be learning your love language um but again, I, I agree with you. Nobody's perfect. No marriage is perfect. No individual is perfect. So you can't say, use the word perfect and say that's the perfect bar. Like, it's got to be named something else because... This is our standard. Is that the word? Yeah, okay. this, it could be the standard. And, and our standard might be different for somebody else. Right. Mm. Um, people enter marriage as if the standard... As if they're the standard and not the student. Your certificate doesn't mean you graduate. Mm. People into me. And you know what? That can be... Almost like, and again, I can't think of the name it was when I was watching because I want to give them give them credit. But it's almost... You, I feel like, okay, a lot of people into marriage, like, okay, we married now. Like, it's supposed to be this. Mm -hmm. and and you don't grow you feel like this is the baseline where it's like yeah that does hinder growth a little bit mm -hmm. it does hinder growth because you bit. you hear that common people say oh he expect me to change like you married me like this and it's it, or you marry or she's saying a man is saying you married me like this but now you want me to do xyz but as you grow your expectations or I don't I don't want to say your expectations because you shouldn't have expectations, but your desires and your needs. I don't think there's nothing wrong with having expectations, but I don't think you should have them in control. But I don't think you should. There's nothing wrong with expecting good. It's it, with nothing wrong with expecting well, what you want, what you desire. Well, what well what I'm saying is your desires and needs will change, so you should be able to communicate that. Your expectation should be that your partner will respect that and try to, uh, within their comfortability, try to match or, or meet your needs or y'all, like you said, compromise mm -hmm. so that you can find some level ground in that right. space. But I don't think that, um, I, I do think that that's a flaw that people have where it's like, okay, we marry and this is us and this is it. And I think this is why, and I've thought this for a long time, I think the reason why so many people get divorced is because people, I don't want to say marriage is hard, being with a person is hard. Whether you work together every day with a person in close proximity every single day for eight hours a day, just relational situations are hard. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a parent-child relationship can become difficult if y'all live together and y'all spend too much time together. And the lack of communication is what can break down there. So in a marriage, it's exemplified because... You have these expectations of this person. You have these things that maybe aren't being communicated that you want from this person. And it's just like, oh, we're married and this is how it's supposed to be. And it breaks down because you don't give each other room to grow. You don't grow together. You don't communicate your needs. You don't right. communicate, you know, what's going wrong. So I, I, I do I, I think, think that statement is eye opening because I don't think either one of us ever looked at it like that. So, I mean, no, but you Like, know. just being honest. Like, we probably looked at it in a different way, but that alone is like, wow. Like, okay, well, you are students because it does, and I told you this before, it, we was good, and I agree with you. We, we was good and loving our relationship, but being married is harder. 
And that's just how I feel. So, and you, and I'm not saying that in a negative way, but there's a lot more expectation. There's a lot more work to be done because of you're married under God. For, 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 for me. you, yeah. I mean, I know that's how you feel. I, I feel like the expectation. And again, I don't have these expectations of, I think you should be this or I think you should be that. I have the expectation. I'm agreeing with you saying my expectation is that I have the intellect and the uh, I can be articulate enough to communicate to you my growth, my needs, and hopefully you love and 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 respect me that you'll rise to that. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have these pinpoint dates and expectations of what you're going to be and what you should be. That's not what I'm saying. It's the but I do have positive expectations that okay, if I communicate this right, this problem will will go away. Yeah. Or she'll meet, she'll rise to the standard that we're we're talking about. Yeah. See, I don't feel like married. I don't feel like it's harder because we're married. I feel like, and, and this is not a negative reflection on you. I think a lot of people do it. It's like this extra added pressure. Be it, it's <clears throat> almost like, um, you know, a a person that um. Let let's just say a person that's going to college, right? Mm -hmm. And you got a person that is in community college versus a person that's going to. I'm I'm just gonna say Temple. I'm not gonna say like Harvard or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, it's so hard, it's so hard, it's so hard. And it's like because of that, you you're thinking that oh I'm at this new level. Like you're still doing the same thing. We just have a new name. We we well, I have a new name. Um, <laughs> I got the same. Man. You, yeah. <laughs> well, no, you no, don't. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and and we have the blessing of God, but I think it's more. Um, how can I say? It's more direct, or it's more intentional. It's more intentional effort to love. But for me, if I feel like. I don't want to say it comes easier, but it's like, this is my husband. Like, this is my husband is going to work. And it's like, failure is not an option. So, like, this is my husband. So, I don't feel like it's harder at all. I, I respect your opinion. Just yeah. respect mine. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, I don't feel like it's harder. I do feel like um, when you say you're a student and this is, like, you're not the standard. Because I told you before we got married, I felt like we've been married for 20 years. Like, we've been doing this. Like, now let's just have a wedding, sign the paper, change my name, and, you know, it is what it is. Until I realized, like, we got a whole lot more loving and growing and being to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt like I probably fell into that. Not like I'm the standard. I felt like... It's us. Like, let's just jump this broom, sign this paper, get on some flights for this honeymoon, and keep it pushing until it's it was a like, than that. oh wow, like this do feel different. It's a yeah. little bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I kind of, I, I, I was definitely one who had to be checked and saying, okay, this is your certificate now to enter into this new phase. Okay. Um. Would you ask someone or me to do something that I never did or saw before? Yeah. Like, would you think that that's wrong? No, because just because you've never done it or saw it before doesn't mean you can't learn. And I trust you. Uh, 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 I trust you and have enough faith in you and your ability to learn something. Okay. Yeah. I, so I I don't think that's um wrong to ask somebody to do something they've never done we've never saw a healthy relationship That's my question is, okay is it wrong to ask your spouse to be and hold them to a standard of being a good husband or wife if it's something that they never ever ever fucking saw so this is my thing where you, so where the word that you use to hold and again to this is all stuff i learned today this isn't you <laughs> know this is this is stuff i learned today um when you say hold them to a standard, I think that's what's wrong because you have to realize. Well, you have to. Well, well no, no. Let, let, let me finish this. Go thing. ahead. But you have to think about this. You, if you, if you've never seen a healthy relationship, 
I've never seen a healthy relationship, that we have to establish that standard together. It's like entering a business and having to create a handbook, and you're like, I agree. What do we want the rules to be? But you have to have a standard of what you think good is. You got to be reaching towards some goal because neither of y'all know what good is, so you can't just be winging it. You have well, to you say. Well, you are winging it until you realize you're what winging works the and in don't between, work. but you have to look a little past the situation and say, we want to get to that. Right. Whatever we agree that we think good is because neither one of us have an idea of it. But let's sit down and create that idea. Right. And let's, meaning let us. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Me holding you to a standard is not fair. Let us determine what that standard but that's what looks I'm, like. That's what I mean. I'm not saying coming into it and holding you as a standard because obviously I don't know what that is. Right. So we have to sit down and say, okay, this is what we want our relationship to right. be. This is what I think. Like, I never saw good, but this is what I'm... I feel like good should be. Right. Or this is what I like, feel what like good about? is it. Yeah. So let's not do that. So I think I, I I think that yeah, you can do but again this this comes down to love, respect, communication, valuing each other and wanting to do that. Because if you just like you need to be a good husband and but I'm not communicating to you what my needs are or what I feel like a good husband is. One woman might feel like he's a good husband as long as he come home every night. I don't care what he do during the day as long as he come at home. Or, you know, as long as he pay the bills. I don't even care if he don't come home at night sometimes. As long, like, to her, that might be a good husband. She might be okay with that. And the same for you. You, you determine what you value as a good wife. And we... So we established that, but also remembering that that standard can change. Okay, so we kind of broke the statement up, but hearing it in its entirety, would you ask someone, me, to do something I never did or saw before? Is that wrong? Is it wrong to ask your spouse to be a good husband or wife if it's something that they never, ever saw and don't know what it is? The gift to each other is that we love each other enough to accept the fact that you're learning on me mm. that's pretty dope you're learning on me you know one of the things you so said does to that me, change the thought process that you no that statement for you no you know you're right and it, I, I mean it adds to it because it's almost like you have to extend grace to your partner and understanding that they may make some mistakes now there are some caveats to that. The mistake can't be that you punch me upside my head for, for <laughs> us. Because that's, there's some things, there are some things that I expect you to know. Or the mistake can be, oops, I slipped on, fell on this penis. Like, there are some things that you're expected to know. But that just, it just makes me think. Read that, read that last piece again. I gotta read it in its entirety. No, I don't want to hear all of it. Just the last piece. <laughs> the last piece. <laughs> Go ahead. You can say the whole thing again. Okay. Okay. The gift to each other, if we love each other, is to accept the fact that we're learning on me. That's to me. That just says you're extending grace to your partner. You're. I know that you're learning. I agree. I got the yeah. same thing out of that statement. I know that you're learning. So you may not always get it right. But again, the love, the communication, the respect is when you don't get it right. Does that mean we're just over? Or am I gonna say, look, I ain't like when you said such and such. I ain't like the way you talk to me. Or I don't like the fact that you don't do this. I don't like that you don't hug me enough. I don't like that you don't kiss me. I don't like you don't tell me, you know, if you got to do it. Whatever the situation is, it's communicating through those things that may not have gone right the first time right. so that your partner can learn. You told me a long, long time ago, and this kind of tied into, like, you know, you not growing up with a father. And when it came to being a man and being in a relationship, you had to wing it. Right. And, you know, you wong it in previous relationships and, and it didn't up. go right. And you, you fucked up royally. Yeah, <laughs> and you had to learn on your own. You had to wing it. So in marriage, I think we have had more um, of a nurturing and learning period, but we're still winging it, but with more knowledge and experience. Then it's not winging it. That's the thing. The definition okay, maybe of winging, not winging it, it. Is, is having no example. Okay, so we're not so we winging it we have tools, we have examples, we have an a, a experience and a knowledge of what we don't want, what we do want. Right. So in the beginning, 
And it's like you said, me growing up with a father, it's like, okay, I'm out here. I don't know what the fuck to do. Right. I got no example of even where to start. Mm -hmm. But we do have an example of where to start or not to be or not. We know not to go down this hole or we have tools that can prevent us from going down this hole. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So we're not we have winging more of a starting point. Yeah. We're not winging it because we actually know some stuff now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're winging it when you don't know shit. Um, how has our relationship evolved over the years? Well, <laughs> it's like it ain't even a ring on it. Um, well, no, because you gave me a ring in 2002 and then another one. And so I didn't got rings and rings and rings. But I think the biggest e evolution of our relationship and it's almost like it, it came full circle because we started as friends. Right. And then we got into a relationship and trying to get that piece right. Right. We lost the friendship piece, which I think, again, in hindsight, probably contrib attributed to uh, contributed to a lot of the bumps that we hit in the road because we were so focused on getting us right without realizing the get back to ground zero, which was the friendship. And but you know, I you know we, we, I, I, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but the journey started to not be fun. Mm -hmm. And that's where yes. we lost the friendship. It was like, we're started doing this off thing. So fun. And we was buying this house. And it was like, we're doing this thing. And we're accumulating this stuff. But this ain't fun. And I don't know if I want this stuff with her. Or I want this stuff with him. And it's like, I love her, I love him, but... Let me tell y'all, we got... So, 2001 started us. We bought our house in 2008. May 2008. Between September 2008 to February 2009, it was like, how do I get out of a mortgage? How do I yeah, I did like, not like you. How do I do how I do I undo like this? You. Like I don't want this house, I don't want him. And and that's what the, do I do? Like And that's the biggest thing. You can love somebody to death, but you gotta like them. It's about being it's always about being in love, but it's about being in like. And too. let me just add like this. is is super strong. It's it's up there with love. And if you can you can love somebody, but if you can't stand them or you can't like them or you don't like their personality or how they respond to you or talk to you, you're done. And, you're and done. part of it, too, though, because through us not liking each other, we always loved and respected each other. So I think that was the when people say, you know, um, what's love got to do with it? I agree where you need more than just love. Right. But love can be that string that holds you on if you can hold on to make it back to the bright side. But I don't think that for me, I don't think that's not what it was for me. So it, it was like. So what held you on? The friendship. Remembering that we were friends. Oh, uh, well. That's what it but was. I mean, At that time for me, it was so stressful, so, so difficult. And like, I don't like you, but I love you. But it was like, okay, I love this girl. I need, I still need to see her every day, but I don't like her. I don't want to, I wanted to just be there, but I don't want it to be in my face. So it was almost like, okay, I have to get back to, 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 to actually having the thought of this is my friend. Like, but let me friends. tell you what, let me tell you, and this has happened a couple of times in our life. So just to add some additional context to this. We, at that time as well, prior to us buying the house and then, you know, during this really, really bad time with us, we were going through fertility treatments. Mm -hmm. Like, going to the... We were just going through fertility treatments, and we don't have no baby, so obviously it wasn't going well. Um, and like I said, from like September 2008, it was like six months after we bought the house up until February 2009. Now we're headed up to a year, and it was it was bad. March 2009, part still, this was part of like going through fertility treatments. Yeah, that's it. And, um, you know, part of as a result of one of the um, services I had done, um, uh, I became I almost died, like, I got really sick. And that was like, like one of the moments that like sealed us back together and that's why i say i feel like that love was the for me i know you said the friendship that love was the thread that held us on through that because in that moment 
it was like, this is my baby. I got to take care of her. Like, you was there. And I think from that moment, like, we were, you talking about going downhill. We was almost at the bottom of that hill. And then we constantly went up. And that don't mean as we went up, it didn't get a little rocky. <coughs> and we, you know, had, but we never came back down that far. No, again, and ever. it almost was like a sign from God, like, all this time that y'all been going through this bad shit and going through ups and downs and fighting with each other, um, that's the test. And y'all didn't split on, you know, the rubber bands thin and y'all didn't split. But here's the situation that's definitely going to bring <coughs> you two back to where you need to be to a place that you've never even been before. So that's how I looked at it. And, 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 and even then, again, I reiterate, like it was, I love you. But I have to remember that before we was in love with each other, we was just hanging out and being friends and laughing and joking. And I think that's what got lost on my end. Like the love was always there, me always being in love with you. But it was like the like part was big for me at mm -hmm. that moment in 08, 09. Yeah. Um, who's inclined to be more jealous, you or me? You, definitely. Why you say that? You know, I don't put too much weight into like... As so if I'm, out, if I'm outside in these streets, and these... If I'm outside, because I ain't... I mean, I'm outside with you, but if I'm outside... First of all... If I'm outside... <laughs> first of if all... If I'm outside... If he outside, he at Walmart or Home Depot. If I'm outside... <laughs> <laughs> or, or he's with his brother. If I'm outside... I, please believe I ain't worried about a thing because if he when he's outside he doing like this I smell her on my lip like if I'm outside like, damn I can't wait to get he gonna get a breeze past I'm like that smell like Tasha if he's outside guess what when he is outside guess what I'm doing I'm here I got the remote I got all my pillows around me I got like six water bottles maybe some popcorn I'm like Huh, like I'm about to like that's my kind of like or oh, maybe some cheeses maybe and, some and what you doing tracking me so where you at no what you doing <laughs> uh, being a detective you're probably calling me bullshit you're due for Rasheen he's due for a minute if a I'm boy's outside day. if I'm outside if if I'm outside Come on, don't play with me man if I'm outside what you doing that's part of my astrology my Leo sign let's like okay can, that's what lions do let's say you stop touching my leg sorry that's what, that's, Leo's what leg. <laughs> that's what Leos do so if I'm outside right first of all you see me get dressed up you know first of all if I'm getting dressed up to go anywhere he's trying to undress me before I leave that's what the, that's nothing wrong with that okay um and then don't let me put some shoes on or something your old ass lady now and then when i leave so what you doing tracking me no nah, i'm sitting on the couch smoking watching the game chilling mm -hmm. i ain't tracking you what i'm tracking you for i know where you at oh it's all good what you gonna go to you gonna ride around the block go to the store you never know where I go. He don't stay. If I'm not here, he doesn't know how. Unless I go out like late at night, which I don't go out, but so late. If I go out like the daytime, he does not stay in the house. You don't know what I do. He, I come home. He got bags from Walmart, Home Depot, at home, Target, Dollar General. I had errands to run. I'm, I was outside. But if I was here. Mingling amongst the people. But you never know. I could have been walking down the aisle and at home and some fine ass lady was like, hey, how you doing, sir? And what would you say? I'm doing well. Oh, what you I'm in here looking well. for? Looking for some houseware. Okay, you need some help with that? What, you got an eye for houseware? Yeah, I can help you pick something out. Sure, we just look at some stuff in the house. Okay. Or I can take you to my house and no, show I'm you what good. I'm wearing. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. We can look at some plates, but I'm good. So you letting another chick pick out plates for my no, house? No, I just said we can look at some plates. I didn't say you was picking plates. So you were I'm not that good at it, but it's like, oh, you think See, that's... this is how situations happen, right? So let's say he and he in the store, right? And he with this lady and they looking at plates, picking out plates. And then let's say my cousin Karen, my sister, you know, she walks down the aisle, she like 
hey, what you doing? What's up, cuz? What's going on? And this lady like, hey, we just picking out plates. No, man. Least, she ain't got nothing to say. What's up, cuz? I'm just sitting here with this fucking lady picking out plates. <laughs> that would be what I would say. Just like that. <laughs> What's up, cuz? This is fucking lady I just met now. We picking out fucking plates. Or oh, what if, like, Toya sent me a picture, like, I'm in at home and Jamar is in here with this lady picking out plates. You know what I would do? I would plates. FaceTime you. Oh. Uh, what's up, Tosh? This is here with, what's your name again? Sarah. And we, um, looking at these plates we saw up. Sarah, I don't need you picking <laughs> plates for my house, Sarah. Pick plates for your own house. Um, so I would be the, the one to be more jealous? So would you rather look jealous or crazy? Crazy. <laughs> fuck. Crazy. I'm fighting. Man, I'm, I'm going to act a fucking fool. Like that time you chased me in your church shoes? I told somebody that today. <laughs> I told my fellas that today. Another quick they story They're going to see for this and know. Like, I, I, I told somebody that today. Another quick story for y'all. So we have went out. There we go. We went out. And we were in separate cars, and when we was leaving, somehow signals got crossed, whatever. I left, I like pulled off, left before him or whatever. Long story short, he didn't know where I was. And this was 2005, maybe. Yeah, you, you got home like an hour after I did. I don't think it was like an hour. Oh, yeah, it was. Okay, so anyway, I'm driving up the street. Next thing I know... He's be yeah, because I thought he was home. I think I had to drop my sister off or something. No, you didn't. He was supposed to come home. Regardless, whatever the situation was, he's, he's behind me in traffic all of a sudden. How did he get behind me? But whatever. I'm everywhere. You ain't never there. So he jumps out, and we were dressed up. He runs up to the car in his shirt and shoes. He's like, get, he comes to the jealous out window. Boom, 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 boom. Get your ass in the house. I look up like, what? I pulled off. I was chasing your ass. I down. pulled off. He slipped and slid in his church shoes, ran back to his truck. So our street was right there. I could have just turned down, but I went past the street and went around the block. Oh my goodness. Yes, he was chasing me in your church shoes. Yeah, I'd rather be crazy. Have you ever been cheated on? Yes. In our marriage? No. I, was I about never to, cheat on yeah, you. Yeah, I'm about to say, is this about me? I'm about to say, what the fuck? I didn't think your yes meant for me. Well, I know because you. I thought about it. You said evolution of marriage. So let me. I was cheated on my first boyfriend. He was my boyfriend when I was 14 years old. And I always say this, you know, to young girls, even though young girls this generation are different. Um... Stick to your morals, stick to your beliefs, no matter what. But long story short, he cheated on me with this girl. This was like two years later. Like, I think that we were like 16 or 17 at that point. And she could have boyfriends, like boys, spend a night over her house. I couldn't compete with that. <laughs> like, so he cheated Those on me. girls I like he cheated on me with this girl. She was not cuter than me at all. Then after of that, of course, he was still coming around. Like we were. And today he's a bum. He no, I wasn't kids. going to say that. I don't know. No, no, no. I wasn't going to say that. But I'm just saying, you know. So that broke my heart. You know, it did. It broke my heart. Have you ever? <gasps> yeah, and I had another situation. Yes, I've been cheated on. Have you ever cheated? No, I've never been a cheater. Ever. Ever. That just, I'm, yeah, that ain't, nah, I've never been a cheater. I've been cheated on, mm -hmm. and I've cheated. Mm. So that answers that, wraps that up. That's all? You ain't no elaboration? I've been cheated on, oh, um, who cheated on me? My first girlfriend cheated on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't want to throw no names out there like that, but mm -mm. she cheated on me. And uh, broke my heart. My, my first four-year relationship mm -hmm. broke my shit down. I was a teenager, like 14, 15. We was together until I was like 17. And uh, my shit got broke. Mm. Got skinny. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, all that. Um, and I did cheat before. I can't, I yeah. can't think who, but I did. Yeah, you did. Let's move on from that. <laughs> no, I wasn't talking about. Well, I no, no, no. What's your beef? What's my beef? 
Let me get my What's shit your off. beat today? My beat is <clears throat> the way women are preyed upon these days. Um, I've been saying this to my wife for years. I think it's fucked up the way women are really, really to society inferior to everybody else that's walking the earth. Like a big guy across the street, a woman gets scared. A bigger woman, a woman could be scared of. Like it's like you guys come out the house afraid of somebody doing something to you. Not like in the forefront of your mind, but just always somewhere knowing that you might can be overpowered or you're in a dark parking lot or elevator by yourself. And this is all shit that men don't even fucking think about. But just recently, some guy dresses up as a flower delivery guy and goes to a woman's house and tases the shit out of her. Now, what woman wouldn't open the door for a basket of flowers when you might think, oh, the guy that you fucking with that sent you flowers or somebody you talking to might sent you flowers. So you might part the door for a minute. But that's like some serious preyed upon shit. And then for another guy to knock on the door and ask another woman to eat her out, like this is sick. This is beyond sick. Like, and again, this is shit guys do not even think about. Ain't nobody knocking on the door asking, can they do something to me? If I see a guy across the street, 6'9 and 300 pounds, I don't give two shits. Like, he ain't in my space. I don't feel intimidated. But a woman might be like, no, I'm not crossing the street or walking over there or getting on an elevator with a dude that big because I'm this small or I'm a female. And I think that's just fucked up how the, the, that, um, that women are preyed upon like that. It's, that's my beef. Yeah, that's, um, that is pretty, uh, it's sad and it's oh, scary. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. A Florida man was arrested for trying to abduct two women in 40 minute time span. Like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Ain't no man getting abducted in a 40 minute time span. Like, that's just crazy. You know what? I, I you know, just to just jump on your bed and bandwagon with that, I really want to encourage all the women to your daughters, your sisters, your aunts, your grandmoms, your nieces. Pay attention. Pay attention. So many people have their faces in their phones. And not just pay attention, meaning like when you walk and pay attention. Really pay attention. If you're in a place, did you see a car, the same car drive by like repeated times? Did you see a person, you know, maybe standing somewhere staring at you? And I ain't talking about be paranoid. It's a difference in being observant and paying attention than being paranoid and, you know, right. having an well, it's anxiety. It's not in the attack. forefront of your mind, right. but you just... You know better. You're on right. alert. This is a quick tip that I had to learn that I do sometimes. And I'm don't get me wrong. I ain't out in public a lot, like, outside of my car. Like, I'm typically in my car with him, so it's not like I'm walking down the street a lot. But sometimes what I'll do, like, if I drive past a person, I'll look at him, and I just think to myself, if something happened to you and you had to describe that person, what did they have on, you know, or that car, you know, if some if something happened to you, how, how could you describe the car? Or looking at the streets that you want, like what would be the best way to to get help? Like, and, it's, and see, it's, that's that's my point though, and 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 that's you're making my point. We don't, I don't have to think about shit you like don't, that. But I don't we have women to walk, do. and that's what I mean. You, an elevator door opens, and it's me on there, and a woman. She might like, I'm gonna take the next one, and. I know what it is. I know you're not getting on because I look intimidating, but it's like, damn, like, how, that's a fucked up way to live. Like, everything is intimidating. Oh, I'm about to go to the store. Oh, shit, it's dark over there. Or a woman pulls in the Wawa, don't see nobody in the store and waits there until some people come. Like, to, just yeah. to be like that kind or of thought process a, everywhere you go because, you know, some shit might happen to me. Why? Because I'm a woman. And if a guy comes up on me, yeah, I can fight and scratch and kick, but one fucking punch and I'm down and he's going to overpower me. And and again, or like if you get in the elevator and it's a man in there, let him push his floor first before you push your floor. And yeah, there's those aren't things that a man has to think about. As women, we do. And it's a fine line because you don't want to limit yourself and not have fun and not enjoy life. But you do, you are a woman, and unfortunately, we are preyed upon. So you do have to take those measures to protect yourself. So 
you know, I, I don't want to walk around being, you know, people like, oh, I just want to be free. I ain't walking around scared. Be observant yeah. and, and be prepared. It ain't about, you know, submit, um, you know, surrendering your freedom to somebody for the sake of, oh, I'm going to live my life. Lock your doors when you get in a car. You pull up, you know, at a red light or a stop sign or something. Somebody jump. Now, I know with newer cars, it's harder to do, but things can happen. Somebody jump in your car. And, like, drive off, put a gun in your hip. What you about to do? And as a woman, like, be honest with yourself. If somebody pulled up in a van, a flower van, and got out and had a bouquet of flowers and rung the doorbell and didn't look shady, would you crack the door and see what it was? Like, I mean, be honest with yourself. Would you open the door? Just not wide open, but would you open the door to say, damn, who sent me flowers? Was it my dad? Was it my uncle? Was it my brother? Was it my boyfriend? Was it my husband? Like, it could be it could be anybody just surprising me. Yeah. But no, it's some fucking freak who gonna come in here and knock me down and tase me. And for, for, for whatever reason, leaves. Like, that's the luck in it that she didn't get raped. But for, for whatever reason, like, almost like it's a tase hit. It, it, like, it, like it could have been like here. a sign to somebody else, like I got. Like your I got girl. sent here to tase you, and you know that's it. It could have been. It could have been. That's crazy. Um, my beef. What's your beef? So and I, you know, I don't know what your three grams are, so I'm a little hesitant in saying what my beef is. So I'm gonna go in a different direction. So this is my beef, and. I am one, I'm a person that strongly believes in minding my business and not telling people what to do. Mm -hmm. But this is something that I have, I always knew of, but it has been, um, I've been more enlightened about this new world of inspired clothing and inspired handbags and inspired footwear. That's a different word for fake. You know, call it what you want. Knock off. Knockoffs, yeah, that, that's what we grew up calling it. Knockoffs, the stuff. fugazi. And my thing is this I love a nice handbag, I love nice shoes. And if I really, really like something, I know my price limit, and I'll you know shop within it. And I'm so comfortable in my lane where I can admire something that's out of my lane, but I'm okay with not having it. I'm not gonna buy something fake because I want to look like. I have something that I can't afford the real item of. And the crazy thing about these fakes, it's not like back in the day where the stands on Canal Street or whatever, you know, you buy a bag that's $20, $40. People are spending $300 for bags that, granted, may be $1,500 and you're buying it for $300. But you know what you can do with $300 rather than buying something fake? And my sister Toya got got, and I don't even want to go into detail, but y'all out here burning people for their money selling fake products. Now, don't get it twisted. She don't carry anything fake, so she, she does no, not any longer have the product. But I'm just saying, y'all out here just wanting to live this life that ain't your life. Stay in your lane. It's so comfortable when you stay in your lane. It's so comfortable there. You don't have to worry about what nobody else is doing. You don't have to worry about potentially crashing into somebody. You don't have to worry about breaking down and getting a flat and can't afford it because you're in your lane. That was a good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my beef. Nobody stays in their lane. Everybody's the same. Everybody wants to do the same. I don't know. I don't agree that nobody stays in their lane, but too many people aren't comfortable in well, their the lane. Well, the lane is fucking crowded. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm not saying I you got got to get out of saying everybody and never, but the goddamn lane is crowded. <laughs> um, three grams. R. Kelly got convicted. I'm not surprised. I mean, I think it's been dragged out. And to be honest, I haven't been following the case at all. I heard. I haven't been following it either, but. You know, that this news that he got convicted. But I heard, like, it was boys involved in his case, too? I didn't he gave even... gave herpes to little boys. Oh, man. Well, I'm not going to... He gave herpes to young boys. I'm, I say little. I'm, my People might think four and five-year-olds, but 15-year-old boy or something like that. I, mm, I don't know any... Deep, like, again, I haven't... But I'm happy he got convicted. I'm happy he got convicted. It makes me sick to my stomach, the people that feel like they still have to support him. It's like, what... What more proof do you need? Um, do yeah. um, it 
it's all entertainment. So he was there to entertain, and now he's not there to entertain. Do and we don't listen to his music. We have it, but we never really talked about it. Like, what? Do you not separate the man from the art? Like, do you not watch the Cosby Show when it comes on? If you're just flicking through the channel, do you not do things like that no more because of what they did in their personal life? So what I'm asking is, do you separate the entertainer from, from the man from the art? So do we, me, would you listen to a, a R. Kelly song? Would you play a R. Kelly song? Would R. Kelly song came on the radio? Would you shut it right off? Or if, Bill, if you're watching, watching TV and a Cosby show coming, and it was an episode you like, oh, shit, I like this one. Would you be like, ah, no, nah, I can't watch it because it's Bill Cosby? So I will admit, I probably feel a little more torn about Bill Cosby, not because of, like, you know, his guilt or innocence, not because of that, but because the Cosby show held, holds such a special place in my But the man childhood. who was playing it was giving women Spanish fly. What I'm saying is, I, it probably would be, wouldn't be as em in immediate reaction for me for that but i'm looking or you know seeking out watching a cosby show right. either r kelly i will not listen to but the what music. if that was the circumstance you're scrolling through tv the cosby shows on it's an episode you that you like from when you was a kid do you stay there or do you i leave? probably won't I because probably... of that yeah okay yeah i probably yeah not because you saw it before but because he fucking did some dumb shit yeah okay um r kelly absolutely not i Make, Never will listen to an R. Kelly song? Because, you know what, it, to me, it's so much deeper than just, like, separating the man and the music. It makes me think his mentality and making those songs, it's almost like, okay, when we talk about, even though these people were not um, convicted of any crimes, we was listening to a, was it N.W.A. song? Mm -hmm. And they were talking about, and it was a very sexually explicit song, and in the lyrics, they say she was 14 and blah, I don't even remember, and yeah. it was like, ho, 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 yeah. ho. Like, this was a record that was on an album that was published, that was sold to the people, where they are talking about having sex and they say she was 14. Six guys in the back of a car. And it's like, I will, like, who can, who's bumping that song, Remember singing the words? Who was listening to it? Because I, I put the album on and it was like, she was like, wow, these are some raunchy lyrics. And I'm like, yeah. The song this was is, raunchy to this begin is NWA. with. NWA. This is probably the eighth or ninth song on the album. So we listen to the album and we get to this song and she's like, I'm like, listen to this particular record. And she's listening and listening. And she's like, what What did he say? Oh, my God. And it was like, yeah, babe. Like, this is misogynistic rape culture lyrics back then. Being the misogynistic 90s. is one thing. Be having pedophilia yeah. music is another thing. You, I, misogyny I doesn't bother me. Two Live Crew, Drop It Like It's Hot, um... Uh, to the Doodle windows, Brown. to the wall, <laughs> Luke, Doodle Brown. None of that stuff bothers me. But this song clearly says she was 14. Yeah. Like, so that was bad. I would I agree never. With you. Who, who wants to be bumping that and singing that? And I feel the same way about R. Kelly. Okay. Like, he doesn't say those kind of words, but you think, like, was he making this song after, you know, while looking at Aaliyah naked while she was 14 years old, 15 years old? I get what you said. I agree. I just wanted yeah. to see your perspective. I agree. I, I don't listen to R. Kelly. I don't seek out R. Kelly. And he has um, some great music, but I've never listened to it. I hear a song, it. which you don't normally do anymore because they don't play his music, but right. when you hear something, it's like you instantly think, damn, R, like, what the fuck? You, you like, ruined a Bill whole Cosby for segment me of music for us. was different because I didn't know that Bill Cosby made a deal not to be convicted. And the deal was to admit that I was drugging women with Spanish fly. Mm -hmm. So he said that in a testimony that I was drugging women not to get convicted, which is why he got out. Because yeah, they did convict him. Yeah, yeah. Um, second grand. Sonny Hostin and Anna Navarro pulled off the view because um, Sonny Hostin had went on a personal rant about you know the um, Haitian people down at the at the at the uh, under the bridge in Texas, and um, you know spoke her opinion, which she should be able to do, mm -hmm. and every that's fine. But she did it on that public forum. The vice president was coming on the next day, and right before the interview. 
they pulled them to and said that they had positive COVID tests. Whatever. A couple days go by, people think it's a conspiracy. Well, they came back and come to find out they had false positives, which confirms the conspiracy of the bullshit. Kamala. You was behind all of this, sis, yep. with your chucks and pearls. She was like, I don't want to talk to her. Yeah, you was behind all of this. You you ran. You ran. You yep. were scared. You ran from the heat. You said, look, do whatever y'all got to do because I don't want the heat. Yep. Don't. Are you yawning? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <I can't yawn. laughs> do whatever you got to do because... We got to tell y'all something, too. We are we are bedtime. We change our bedtime. <laughs> We only get an hour of TV a night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Kamala ran from the heat. She and we, we said it as soon as it happened. And the fact that it came out and said that it was false positive. And you know, Sonny and Anna, they thought, there was like the implications behind it. You announce it to the public. It comes out to be false positive they anyway. They got social media. They read social media and know what the narrative was out there as, like, they pulled y'all to. Yeah. Like, because of what you were speaking about the Haitian people the day before, now the vice president comes on. They know you're going to ask her a few questions when they come to you, because each one of y'all get a turn to talk to her. So when they come to you, they know it's going to be that, Haitian The questions. fact that they do this stuff so blatant yeah. in our face and you would is think, so disrespectful. You would think how... Would they just come out and say that they're false positives? But then you think you can't make them go with the narrative that they got COVID. You but can't. You you could also you could keep the test from them and say the test was positive and make them think for a few. But weeks all they got to do is go to their own doctor. But what if they don't? What if I they trust immediately? What if they trust work? the fact that these if, tests that I'm getting at work? Which y'all give me up the They're wazoo. not even gullible because that was too I, much of right, a coincidence. You're right. if so you're me, sunny, I, I would yeah. have immediately left and went to my doctor yep. and said, but this is the thing too, that I feel like their company that they work for should have stood up for Disney? them. And, yeah. Should have stood up for them. They knew. They knew those Walt tests. Disney, were, racist Walt Disney. What I'm saying <laughs> is the company should have said we're not we're not going with this narrative from the if Kamala don't want to come then have her not come but we're not doing this to I would I I mean I can't say I would quit or I would leave but I would really feel some way because they they was all in cahoots and I would think that's I, shady. I would want the I wouldn't other want to work for women, them no more I would want the other two women to walk off too yeah, you gotta we feel have a what's stand, going yeah on. we need, we have to have and a it would be like front. okay if all four of us can not interview her then let's do this another time or not do it at all where was Whoopi? Whoopi was, I think, um, Whoopi, oh no, Whoopi was off, uh, Joy and the other girl did it. Yeah, I know, but I was just wondering where was Whoopi. I don't know, Whoopi was. Whoopi wasn't have had that. I think she's shooting a movie or something like that. She wouldn't have let that go down. No, Whoopi wouldn't have let it go down like that. She's a, she's a renegade. That's one person if I met, I would be fucking starstruck. And I met Whoopi, go well, I've seen I her. Starstruck. I didn't like physically meet her, but I went to the view twice. Yeah. You met two people that I would be starstruck over. Who? Would be in Fantasia. Yeah, I seen Fantasia at the bookstore. <laughs> yeah, she had a book signing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she she made a funny face in your picture. Yeah, I, I always uh -huh. I still got that picture. But if I seen Fantasia and Whoopi Goldberg, I would be like, "That's fucking Whoopi." Like, yeah, I'd be like Tasia. <laughs> I damn you love Fantasia. Um, last gram, United States running out of money October eighteenth. I don't know what that means. That's it. The United States said they're running out of money by October by October 18th. Social Security and all the other stuff is run out. So... Going. Running out of money. I don't believe it. They, well, my thing is this. Okay, if you're running out of money, who? where's all the people who work for the United States getting paid from? See, but you know what they... With the plan that they say they're going to do is raise the debt ceiling. Because apparently it's true. You can't just print more money when you want to or just because right, you just right. you know, you have to have a budget. print money. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a budget in the United States. But instead of paying debt, they raise the debt ceiling. So we're allowed to owe more. So mm. let me borrow some more. Who we borrowed it from? I don't know. Probably China. Mm. I would think who else would, who else would we be borrowing? We wouldn't be borrowing it from Russia. We wouldn't be borrowing it from the bad Korea. I don't know whether it's the north or the south. but You know, I have to admit I'm one? very... North Korea North is the Korea. bad Korea. I'm very ignorant in that realm of the world. As long as my paycheck, your paycheck, 
our bank accounts are good i'm very ignorant when it comes to a, a, admittedly so and i don't want to say like i don't care you know maybe one day i'll take the time to learn more about it but the government they're all crooks anyway so they'll find a way that's why like, it's the last gram yeah <laughs> but wait so can i can i can we have a gram and a half uh, one one more half a gram it's three grams not three and a half grams I, not 3.5 sprinkle a little bit on top i just want to ask your opinion What's about up? this Rick Ross, his baby mom, yeah. she was granted $11,000 a month child support for three kids. A lot of people felt like, oh, she got off easy or he had a great lawyer. And I'll tell you, so that was originally going to be my beef, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I didn't know if you was going to use that as a gram. Because I feel like people really have this warp mentality, like $11,000 a month for three kids is over $3,000 a month to take care of of each child individually. And this is why so many women get themselves in trouble. Or, I don't wanna say in trouble, but they dig themselves into a hole. That lady is probably realizing, I'm not trying to get you for money. I just want the kids to be provided for. Which from a man, and you tell me if I'm right, cause I don't wanna speak for men. I would think that that would make him feel more, um, first of all, it's not to say that's all he's gonna do for his kids. You get this $11,000 and don't ask me for nothing else. He's a father. He's going to still do things for his children that he wants to do. But this is the amount of money that she's being paid each month for child support. Right. But women, you know, so many people feel like she should be getting millions because he has so much money. No. But I would think from a man's perspective, when a woman is not trying to dig you in a hole that deep, then you would be more willing to... You know, it, it's a more amicable yeah. situation. As Ray said, that's the word I was going to use. It's a more amicable situation when it's like, okay, you're not trying to take everything I got. And just because I make more doesn't mean that it takes more for the kid to be taken care of. Like, if the kid is living with you, then my son doesn't have my lifestyle that I'm doing. So if he's if he's living your lifestyle and he has everything that he's need, all his clothes, all his books, all his shoes, and even extra shit and all the entertainment and all that stuff, then why do you need millions of dollars from me to do that? And I'm sure and you're talking about eleven thousand dollars a month, which is more than enough to take care of a kid. And even I even to buy him lavish shit. I mean I'm not well, saying Well that's for three kids. That's still enough money. Yeah, and I would I would assume, I don't know, she probably has a home that's paid for. She probably has a car that's paid for. I don't know if he's, like, paying her bills. But you but, see shit like that, and it's like, okay, he's got $100 million. Your father lives in a 55-room mansion that, you know, is the one of the biggest houses in North America. Like, of course you're going to look at that and say... Oh, you only giving me eleven thousand dollars? Well, no, other, she didn't not say her, that. I'm saying yeah. other people and say, "Oh, you only giving me eleven thousand dollars?" Like, I want more than that. So, like, what what's the number? What's the cap out? Like, if right, what do you want? Five million dollars? What do you want? Ten million dollars? Where does it stop? That's why people need to mind their business. But okay, that was my half a grand. Okay, that's a wrap. Act to the podcast episode thirty eight. Like, subscribe, subscribe day. Subscribe day. Subscribe day. Um. Drop some comments. Um, website is coming. It'll be up soon. Like I said, merch. You can get your merch. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. It's there. Got some winter stuff coming up. Nice looking website. Beautiful to to, to navigate through. Um, I think y'all going to like it. And again, it's audio podcast on there. We're going to have more segments coming. We're going to have more car talk, more everything. So just look out. For Act 2, the podcast. This is about to be the dopest shit ever. I don't know what y'all doing, but y'all better get on this. Because when it blow and we behind this camera and all these people, it's going to be that shit. So mm -hmm. y'all need to get on this. Act 2, the podcast. Episode 38. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you fucking should.